Oh, <laughs> my curiosity is getting the best of me. Whoops. Hey everyone, welcome back to a familiar place, none other than the Steel City, the City of Bridges, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have a fun video for you today. If you're in the mood for a little, not really challenge, but a little hunt, a little, I hear ya, a little chance of luck, then I encourage you to watch. When I was here the first time, earlier in March, I had plans to show you a couple different parks, specifically ones that had water fountains. As you saw, or maybe didn't see in that video, kind of struck out. None of the fountains I had planned to show you guys were in operation, except for one that I found by random, by luck, that was operating. So, upon returning home and coming back here again, I did some research and found out there's even more fountains here in the city. There's a total of six. Some of them we did try to locate last time and they were not operational. Others I didn't even know about. So I thought it'd be fun to go around, walk the city streets, locate the six fountains, and see how many are in operation. Now it is officially springtime. We're just on the verge of April here, and it's been considerably warmer, and there's a good chance that the fountains, fountains may be operational. There's also a good chance they may not be. So before we go any further, I want you guys to pause the video, comment down below with your guess of either zero through six as to how many you think we'll find operating today. And by the end of the video, go ahead and reply to your comment and see if you were correct or not. So if you want to go on this little fountain hunt with me and see how many are operational, well simply get your walking shoes on and come along with me. RJ, that's for you. Oh! Wait, 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 wait. What do I see? This was not on my list. I just found this one randomly. This is a good sign. It's not an impressive one. And that's not a good sign right there. Let's pretend we didn't see that. We do have operating fountains. So we are one for one right now, but this is not on the list. So. This could maybe be a um, like a, a wild card fountain. It's a nice little one though. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fountain heads, and it cascades down the steps here. All right, so aside from that little thing we saw in the steps there, I'm glad we found this one. And just goes to show, watch where you're stepping. You never know what could be laying around on the ground. Okay, so let's get on to our first one though because this is not on the list. We have two of them nearby. There is one at UPMC Plaza, which is the big steel tower. There's one right there in front of the building. And there's a little park next to it called Melon Green and looks like it has structures or like some type, some type of columns that are built in as like a water fountain. So those two are basically right across the street from each other so that's going to kill two birds with one stone and then we do have uh, some traveling to do to get to the other ones so we're not too far away and should be able to show it with you in just a moment here. I want to point out too that if fountains are not your thing in the same little area here they got some random weird seating for the meeting of the minds. So you come here and talk about your displeasure of fountains. There is the Steel Plaza station, which means we are close to our first official fountain on the tour here. 
and I can see it from here. You may be able to see it through the trees. It is not operating. But we'll get as close as we can and give you a brief look at it. This is known as BNY Melon. Welcome to BNY Melon Green. It's open dawn to dusk unless otherwise posted. Well, unfortunately, it is gated and closed. But it's a nice little area here with some greenery, some bushes, some flowers, benches, and right in the middle there is a fountain. It has one, two, three, looks like five columns standing up. And I believe water comes out and kind of trickles down into a, a base there. So that one is not working. So we are zero for zero according to the list, but we do have one right across the street at the base of the UPMC steel tower. Now this place may look familiar to you, that's because I did a few segments here in previous videos, intros and outros of my previous Pittsburgh videos. But this is known as the UPMC Steel Tower. It's a massive thing, massive building, massive tower. And it's uh, right across the street from my hotel almost. And at the base of it is a fountain. And I have some more really great news. Everyone loves great news, right? Good news, great news, fantastic news. The news is, you ready? The fountain isn't working. And this one I did see pictures of. I'll try to insert one if I can find it again. This one is a good size, does some different features, gets pretty tall, but it has the canvas over it. I don't know when these actually open. I mean, we're just on the verge of April here. It's warmer out. You know, it's officially spring. And we already saw there is that little one working. But if you're in the neighborhood and you come upon this gargantuan structure, take a walk in the plaza here and see if the fountain is working. So, we are one for two. No. We're 0 for 2, because the first one doesn't count. That's a wild card. 0 for 2. Fantastic news. We're doing good so far. Okay, let's see what else is on the list. Give me a second here. Okay, next on the list is Mellon Square Garage, which is at William Penn Place and 6th Avenue. So I need to head over to there. And then we do have Point State Park, which we've been to previously. The fountain wasn't working. That's at the confluence of the Allegheny... Monongahela, which forms the Ohio River. That's supposed to be the best fountain in the area here. I'm hoping it's working, but with the way things are going, probably not. Then we do have Gateway Plaza, which, okay, we didn't get to that one yet. And then there is Agnes R. Katz Plaza Fountain. I think it's the one that we found last time by, by random chance where it looked like a little mountain. It was cascading down the rocks. So if that is indeed that one, most likely that'll be working, so we won't be a complete shutout. But okay, I got some ground to cover. I'll see you over by the Mellon Square Garage, William Penn Place and 6th Avenue. We're on the back side of the William Penn Hotel, which is not open for business due to the pandemic, I believe. And that brings us to the corner of William Penn Place and Oliver Street at the Mellon Garage, which is directly behind me. But Pittsburgh, you're killing me! Not open! Not operating! What the heck? I don't think we're even allowed to go up there. There's gates here. Oh, what is my luck? <laughs> it's not good, that's what it is. So, looks like it'd be another beautiful fountain here. They got multiple fountain heads, different levels. It's a pretty big little pond area. And this is on top of a parking garage, which is a good way to utilize the rooftop of it for some kind of natural, somewhat natural 
you know, of a getaway with the trees here, a couple bushes, seeding, stuff like that. Odds are against this, guys. Odds are against this. It even says here, Mellon Square Park, which is Mellon Garage, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., weather permitting. It's nice weather out. It's a little chilly. It's maybe in the high 40s, but I don't know. When do these start operating? I need to know. Okay, so looking at my little list here, UPMC Plaza checklist, zero. Mellon Green next to the Steel Plaza Station, zero. Mellon Square Garage, where we are now, zero. So we got Point State Park, that's the farthest one away. We'll save that for last. We're gonna go to either Gateway Plaza or Agnes R. Katz Plaza, which are in the vicinity of each other. So once I get my bearings, see which way I have to go, I will see you over there. But for those of you who are um, guessing a low number of operating fountains, that's probably a safe bet. I try to be optimistic like I usually am, but Steel City is not on my side today. That's okay though, I'm actually having a lot of fun. This is pretty, pretty fun to wander around and just look for operating fountains, so. All right, before I get lost and go in the wrong direction, I will be right back. Okay, now you're just teasing me. Up on top of there is where we just were, the top of the Mellon Garage, the Mellon Plaza fountain area. And it looks like there's actually fountains here that cascade down to my level here. <laughs> it's lit up, but it's not operating. But let's take something positive out of it. We've got a gorgeous backdrop here of the, the hotel there and the high rises behind it. So take the go with the bad. Now we are going to the Agnes R. Katz Plaza. That is the next one, the closest one. And that one I believe will be operating but don't quote me on that. Got some street vendors over there and one of the many Rite Aids in downtown. And we're heading down, let's see, going towards 7th Avenue and then a little bit further, a few minutes away, for Agnes R. Katz Plaza. Oh, I just realized actually where we're at. This is another gorgeous structure that I featured in a previous video, and it is this magnificent church here. Let me get around everything here, and I'll give you guys a quick glimpse at it here. And the unique thing about it is up here in between the two churches is actually a little graveyard nestled here like right in the downtown city here but that is a gorgeous church i want to touch base on this really quick i feel the show last time just a trinity church burying ground pittsburgh's oldest unreconstructed landmark the whole city block at one time held as many as four thousand graves an ancient indian tumulus burying mound originally occupied part of the site of subsequently the French of Fort De De Quince, 1754, and the British from Fort Pitt, 1758, along with early Americans were buried here. So this has some significant history and crazy to think that 4,000 graves were here in the city block. All right, I had a scroll moment there. Back to our fountain tour. One more scroll moment. This little alleyway here reminds me of like downtown New York City with all the fire escapes and the old rundown buildings. And it's right here across from GNC and the cathedral. All right, we made some progress. We are nearing our next fountain. Random shopping cart. Now this fountain obviously will look familiar from the previous video, but also it's where that public speaker was talking about hell is real, Satan's real, so that may ring a bell to you. I just noticed there's another little tiny park here 
has a very tiny walking trail. It's kind of chained off at the moment, but there are some beautifully blooming trees and a lot of ivy and vines growing on the side of those buildings. It's right next to the proper brick oven tap room. And right across from there is our location. This is the Agnes R. Katz Plaza with a working fountain. And some pigeons being fed. They were eating, what are they eating? Peanut butter and jelly. Or jelly toast. Okay, this is our saving grace. This allows us not to have a shutout of bad luck. This is the one I found randomly my first trip here. And this is the Agnes R. Katz Plaza. And this fountain was flowing early in March and it's still flowing today. It's quite a neat sight. So I found a sign here that says, Welcome to Agnes R. Katz Plaza, a project of the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust. Drawing inspiration from Pittsburgh's rising topography, the late famed American artist and sculptor Luis Borgios, sorry if I mispronounced that, created the 25-foot bronze fountain centerpiece of this 23,000-square-foot public plaza. The sculpture is notable as the largest public art commission by Borgios. Agnes R. Katz Plaza was a creative collaboration between Borgios, landscape architect Daniel Urban Kiley, Theater Square's architect Michael Graves, and the Trust. Katz Plaza was named in loving memory of Agnes R. Katz by her children. So there, we got a little bit of information about it. It is a bronze statue fountain created by someone notable. It's not just some random piece. So if you've never seen or witnessed a bronze water fountain before, well, you can check that off your list now. The thing I may mention of last time is there's nothing really stopping anyone or anything from just walking right into the water. I'm sure it's been done before, whether by children or animals or something else. The other thing I'm noticing too, which I didn't notice last time, is the water comes down, it flows like a little river. So it's going around and then comes down here. So it's it's not only coming over the edges, but it's kind of spiraling its way down, which is a pretty neat design. There's actually a little bird there getting a little bath. They're still enjoying that jelly and toast. So this makes it one for four, our first operating fountain that's on our list. And we got Gateway Plaza, which we're going to next, and then Point State Park. So based on the track record so far, I'm sure some of you may want to go ahead and maybe readjust your numbers that you gave, but those of you that did get zero, obviously it's not the correct number. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, but let's make some make some headway and get to the fifth fountain location, which I'm going to give an early estimate and say I think it's not operating, but let's see if I'm wrong. Got the big advertisement there for the Roosevelt. Looks like Roosevelt Hotel. Down here at the corner of 6th and Penn is a, something you don't see too common, 7-Eleven. They don't sell gas, but they are open for a convenience store. One gateway center, and there's supposed to be a little park and fountain back here. Oh, I do see the fountain. Yes, another goose egg. Well, I'm no psychic, but my prediction was correct. What is this? Hmm. I wonder where that goes to. Oh, my curiosity is getting the best of me. Whoops.
Whoops. Yeah, don't go down those steps. <laughs> Jesus. Oh boy, what did I do now? Sometimes curiosity <laughs> is not a good thing. I didn't even get to see all the way down there, see what's down there. Oh. Okay, let's not do that again. So, let's focus on the task at hand, and that is showing that this fountain, as impressive as it looks, is not operational. Now there is some water in it, it looks like probably from rain, but uh, by no means is it working. But from the looks of it though, I mean, it's almost like a flower shaped design to it, or like a teacup almost. And from what I've seen, I believe it shoots pretty high and it's got the pool here and then an outer pool here. So it is a good size fountain, but yet again, Pittsburgh, is not working with me today, but I can show you around the, you know, little complex here. There is some little pathways that do interconnect. Over there is where we're going next is the Point State Park. But there is a photo opportunity here with someone who is taking a seat on the bench. And <laughs> just to show you, I'm not gonna do it this time. There is more of those steps that go down where I set off the alarm. Stay away from those. I don't think we'll set up any alarms by taking a seat with this guy here. Let's see if there's any information about him. Look, he's having a good, good old time here. He's got his cowboy hat, cowboy boots. Sidewalk Judge Seward Johnson. Donated by Colcom Foundation and Laurel Foundation. So, yeah, he's looking like he's uh, right out of the wild, wild west. Well, we're striking out with fountains, but at least got to see uh, a happy old fellow here. Say that again? He said, you're a fool. I could have told you the fountains aren't working today. Well, partner, thanks for the kind, encouraging words. Still can't believe I set off that alarm. Don't tell anyone. Shh. Okay, so we're gonna cover some ground, not to be repetitive, but literally I have a lot of walking to do to get to Point State Park, which is not too far away, but where the fountain is is pretty far. So once I do get into the park area, I'll bring you back. And if you want, readjust your boats. I was right about that one. I think this one will not be working. Maybe April 1st, maybe May they don't start working. I really don't know. The little cowboy guy there didn't want to tell me any details. He just said, I could have told you they aren't working right now. Well, see, I am, my curiosity is getting the best of me. What are these for? They are all over here and there's alarms in them. Where do they go? Someone, if anyone knows, share some details, but they are triggered with motion detectors, so <laughs> I still can't believe I did that. Just have to stop and admire the view. It's simply outstanding. That's actually a Wyndham Hotel right there. All those windows are facing the Monongahela, Allegheny River, and the Point State Park. So we do need to cross under this bridge, which is the freeway there. And that'll bring us into the main park area where the fountain is located. And it's a sunny, gorgeous afternoon right now. But I think we will have questionable luck. I'm not gonna hold my breath, but there's a small, slight chance it could be operational.
No, well, I can see it in the distance, and I'd say, um, yeah, we are having some fantastic luck today. If we were betting how many would be non-operational, we'd be killing it right now because <laughs> this is not operational. Oh boy. Nonetheless, I'm not going to be negative. I'm not going to complain. It is disappointing because these mountains are spectacular from what I've seen on websites and pictures and stuff like that. But being back here twice now, we're only able to see one, one for six. And that little wild card. But we are here, it is a great place to visit. And I will show you the non-operating fountains. I know everyone wants to see that, how exciting, a fountain that's not working. But in all reality, it's a great place to visit because there is you know, walking paths, there's the museum, Fort Pitt Museum, which is right back there. There's some history to learn and some great vantage points of the rivers meeting here. Sometimes we'll catch barges coming through. Directly in front of me is one of the two inclines, I believe that's to, to Quince. And I'm probably mispronouncing that. I have to learn how to say that word. But that you will see in a separate video. I'm going to be doing a video on that one because I already did the Monongahela over there. That's the second one, which I'll be doing its own individual video on, showing you the whole process, you know, getting your ticket, riding it to the top, showing you the views. I believe that one also allows you to see the mechanisms and inner workings as to how it does work with the cables and pulleys and motor and stuff like that. Okay, I'm gonna make my way across here and I'll see you right there at the fountain. Well, here we are. The exciting highlight, another non-operational fountain. When I tell you guys that I'm gonna offer you top quality content, that's no joke. I don't tell lies. It doesn't get any better than this to see a fountain that's not working. And if you can't pick up on the sarcasm there, I do apologize with you, I said it was a joke. Oh, I do hear a familiar rumble what do we have? CSX freight train rolling right along the Monongahela River. Heading west towards Ohio. And there on the hill there is the incline. And I know I've said before time and time again, photos, videos don't do it justice. This is a pretty massive fountain though. I cannot wait to see it operating in person. I did share pictures in my last video of what it looks like when it is operating. The water gets pretty high, probably at least 40-50 feet, and there are numerous lights and fountain heads around here, and it really draws a crowd during the summertime. I found a picture on the wall here, and I'm not mistaken, this is where we are right now. This is from 1817, view of the city of Pittsburgh. It's right here at the point with the Monongahela Allegheny River forming the Ohio. And it says, point of confluence, it says, nature itself has conspired to render the Ohio hereabouts a place of consequence and importance and the rendezvous of all the people of North America that are within reach of it. John Mitchell, 1756. Point of conflict showing the Native Americans here viewing the rivers. And point of renewal is how it's transformed today. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that is the same location. And we are right around here. So looks like there were bridges here at one point. Pretty much, oh yeah, there's the abutment of it right there. So there was bridges connecting where we are right now. That's the rail line right there where the CSX just went by. And there's the park and the fountain is right here. And this is 1955. I'd like to point out a few points of interest. So there's the abutment of the old bridge, which would have came pretty much right here. There's some actually some barges sitting there next to it. And as we pan over, that is the Ohio River going that way. And in the distance, you see that round funnel shaped thing. That is the Carnegie Science Center, which I did film when I was here last time, as well as the submarine, the USS Requin. We're able to tour that, and to the right is Heinz Field. 
So you got a great vantage point here. Then you turn around and get to see everything. Now that bridge there, I don't believe it's the same one that we saw in that picture because that's further inland. The one that I saw, like I said, the abutment's right there. I'm pretty certain that's the one that's no longer here. And it would have been one going across over there too, which is no longer here. At least that's how it looked on the map. Being out in the open here, there's no protection from the wind, so be prepared for that. But two times in Pittsburgh, both times the fountain is not working. And I will come back a third time once I do have confirmation from someone or somewhere that this is operational. At least this one, this one is the Mecca of all fountains, if that is such a thing. But with that said, I want to first thank you guys for joining me on this random, crazy, little fun adventure. I wouldn't really call this a scavenger hunt because we knew what we were looking for, but it's just a game of chance, game of luck to see if they'd be working. I knew that some of them most likely wouldn't be working. I didn't think it'd be one for six, but that's just the way it goes. Nonetheless, though, I had a great time. It was a lot of fun seeing different parts of the, the city area, walking the streets of Pittsburgh, and setting off alarms. <laughs> that was not planned by the least. I just was curious to go down there. There was no gates, no signs. I figured, hey, maybe this goes somewhere cool. And sensor alarm, not a good idea. But I wouldn't mind doing a video like this again in the future, whether it be somewhere in a different city or even in the woods, like maybe to give us ourselves a scavenger hunt, make a list of like five to 10 things that we have to try to find in the city or in the woods. If you guys have any ideas and seeing something like that or are suggestions for that, feel free to let me know. I wouldn't mind doing one every so often. But nonetheless, I am here for a week now. Well, coming up on a week and I have more videos to film here. So more content will be coming out from the Steel City. Those of you that do enjoy seeing different things here, whether it's touristy things like the incline or seeing different parts of downtown or anything else. Hopefully you do enjoy the content. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. We're now on the back side of William Penn Hotel. We're here at, I believe this is 6th and William Penn or Oliver and William Penn. I don't know, let me see where I'm at. So we do have to go underneath the freeway here through that little bridge, under the bridge. All the rooms on this side would have a fantastic view of the inclines over there, the rivers, the bridge. But we do need to cross over. Damn it.